It's a lovely day for doing some electronics. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Mel to Ooh, Cool Dude Clem. And now the rest of the stuff has finally arrived, I can get on and do things. Well, welcome back to the bench. I'm really going to need to reprint this, but... Yeah, I put it up to a vote which you wanted to see. More work on the homebrew tape recorder, or more work on the homebrew record player. And most of you voted for the record player, so that's what we're going to do. Right, well, I think the best place to start is going to be the power supply for the um, preamp, if you want to call it that. So, we'll need a transformer, a rectifier, smoothing capacitor, and we're going to need some way of regulating this all to 12 volts, so there we go. Um, I think I better put this together with proper solder. Yep, I go all the way to China to get my supplies. That's why I've been so long. Right, well, here's the transformer wired up. Got the mains wires on this side. A rectifier and smoothing capacitor on this side. Now, this is a center tap transformer, so I could just get away with using two diodes. And no, I have not wired this up wrong, because the center tap is right there. I know you would think it would be there, but it's actually there. So, um, let's power this up and see what we get. Okay, let's plug this into the mains and see what we get. See what voltage we get. Alright, that's giving us about 16 volts. Alright, 17 volts. So that's going to be pretty easy to regulate into 12 volts. Okay, so here is the completed power supply. This whole thing is going to be kind of a mishmash of technologies. We've got a transformer from, well, what you'd expect to see in a linear power supply, going into a switch mode regulator, and that's going to power a valve circuit. Now, I know what some of you are saying. I could have just used a 7812 there instead of all this complicated stuff, but the thing is, as it's going to be powering the valve filament along with a few other things, that would mean I'd need to slap a huge heatsink on there, and it's just... Well, the other thing is I don't have any spare 7812 regulators right now, so this will have to do. So let's plug our transformer in and see what we get. Hopefully they've got the polarity the right way around, and I think it'll go bang. Okay, we've got 1.2 volts coming out. That's a wee bit small. Just disconnected the transformer, seeing if it's holding that voltage. Yep, there it goes. So I think... That circuit was doing its regulating. Let me just find a screwdriver so I can whip the voltage up. Okay. I just need to find my power cord again. Not that kind of power cord. Plug this in. Okay. We have poor. Oh, there we go. That's about where we need it. Okay, so here is our preamp, if you want to call it that. Made using a valve and a couple of transistors and a few passives. So I think it's time to take all this ugly point-to-point -point wiring and transfer it onto a nice board. So this is just one half of the circuit. As you may remember, this is a valve designed for 12 volts HT, so we can power everything on that single 12 volt rail. So I guess it's time to build this thing. Well, starting work on this thing now. I've really got to find out which of these pins are which. Right, guess it's time to solder this thing up. Watch as all the things fall out. Well, maybe not. Okay, well, here's the board almost done. I've just got to add the input and output wires. These wires here, this orange and black wire, they're for our power. As you can see, I've now put the valve base in, the two transistors, the four resistors, and the two capacitors. Although it is a little bit of a wiring nightmare, I think it's going to work. At least we've got a nice star ground here, so that shouldn't be too much of a trouble. Well, here we are. Here is the completed board. So we've got our right and left outputs. I think they're um, the right way around. So 
the left input is going to give us left output and the left right input is going to give us right outputs if what I just said makes any sense so those are our two output wires and this is our input wire, just a two core shielded cable. So I want to keep as much hum out of this as I can. As you can see, that's going right to the middle of the star ground. I couldn't do the same with the output wires, but I don't think that's going to matter too much. One thing I want to point out about this is that this is not a preamp. It doesn't boost the voltage coming from the cartridge, and it doesn't provide any equalization because. This is designed for a ceramic cartridge, and although ceramic cartridges kind of have their equalization built in, and they more or less output line level output, thing is, ceramic cartridges are piezoelectric devices, which means they have a really, really high impedance. So if you connect a ceramic cartridge up to a normal amplifier, it's just not going to sound very good. It's going to sound very tinny, it's going to sound very baseless. So what this thing does is it has a really high impedance input, thanks to the valve, which is this one. So the valve takes the output from that ceramic cartridge, gives it a little bit of a current boost. Then that's fed into these transistors here, which boost the current even more. So we have a nice, almost infinite impedance input and a low impedance output. So this is where the signal goes in along this wire here and here is where our signal comes out. Now I'm sure some of you are saying why don't I just get a magnetic cartridge put that into the BSR record changer and well just use that. Well the problem is I tried a magnetic cartridge in fact it was that one I, you just saw a minute ago in that very same record changer, as soon as I turned the motor on, it was Hum City. So, these things are just not designed to be used in any kind of close proximity to an AC motor, so that's why I have to go with a ceramic cartridge in this record player. Right, well, let's give it its first power up and make sure everything's okay. Got my voltage and current meter here. If all goes well, it should draw a relatively high current at the start, but as the filament starts to warm up, this should drop uh, probably to around maybe 350 milliamps, something like that. Well, let's see what we get. Okay, yeah, we got just over an amp there. The current is dropping. And um, here, yeah, both sides of the valve have lit up, although you cannot really see it. Might be easier to see it this way. So We can see that's working. No smoke, that's a good thing. Right, well, let's connect this up to an audio source and see if it passes the signal. Guess what, everybody? The camera was paused while I thought it was recording, and recording while I thought it was paused. So I just think I've recorded a whole bunch of stuff while the camera was paused. So, anyway, here we have our circuits. I've got the transformer here. Now, I thought those two diodes might be a little bit too wimpy to power this tube, so I changed those to these much bigger ones, and I also added some extra capacitance. As you can see, the transformer with the circuit connected is giving us about 14.4 volts. So it hasn't dropped down too much, that's about where I was expecting it to go. And there's our regulator, and our circuit. So I think it's about time to connect this up to an um, audio source and hear how it sounds. And this is our audio source, the ceramic cartridge from this record player, so... Well, let's give it a listen. Well, I think it's working. Of course, I had to start the camera right as the song was ending. But I'm going to say this is a success. Yep. I'm just trying to get it all in the shot here. 
Yep, I don't think I'm gonna get in the shop. I think I should play this song whenever my neighbor puts his music on. Well, that just about craps things up for today. Tune in next year when I give this thing a huge mechanical overhaul and try to fit all of this stuff inside. But until next time, goodbye. I put it up to a vote which you wanted to see, whether it was the more work on the homebrew tape recorder or more work on the homebrew record player. And I say that again because mm, mm, with my words, proper soul though. But not that silly lead free rubbish. Now some people, a linear power, a linear rectifier, could be, I'll say that again which is going to power a valve circuit. I'll say that again. But the thing is, because this is going to be powering the filament, I'll start again. Why don't I just put a magnetic cartridge into that preamp? I'll say that again. I'll say that again. I'll say that again. I'll say that again. I'll start again. I can't stand that horrible row